All right, guys. It is now a lovely May the 2nd here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where it is 41 degrees here in hell in the collapse uh, with snow heading our way. They're saying accumulations about one inch here in western New York on May the 2nd. <coughs> anyway, uh, we will do the weather whiplash rant some other day. Uh, so anyway, I was, I, was, huh, I was hoping to bring you a choking on hopium rant today, but the... Uh, the uh, proprietor of the of the inn here has forbidden me. I have I have been forbidden to do my choking on hopium rant that I had prepared. So anyway, uh, since she does not want to hear it, I guess I'll just uh, cover up the choking on hopium shirt with just the old standby. The old standby t-shirt. Oh, and uh, maybe a little bit of hopium in this story. So I have had a couple of rants from this fellow named Michael Lerner. L-E-R-N-E-R. -E -E he lives out in uh, Bolinas, California, which is a great town up in Point Reyes if you've never been to uh to Bolinas, California. But anyway, <coughs> this is from resilience.org from the excellent website resilience.org. I'm wandering off of medium.com. Uh, originally published by Angle of Vision and republished yesterday here on resilience.org. And this is this long book-length essay. I will uh, put the link on here, and you can read this yourself. But I'm just going <coughs> to touch on the beginning, in the middle, and towards the end. I'm going to read probably less than half of this excellent piece called Navigating the Poly Crisis, Life in Turbulent Times. There you go. So what is the poly crisis? First, let's roughly define the poly crisis. Some claim it is nothing new. We believe the poly crisis is new. I'm not sure who the we is here. He is, this is just a one person writing this. So I don't know if Michael is one of these new pronoun people who use a plural pronoun to just anyway I'm not sure who we is uh, but I guess he, he I guess he's talking about anybody with brains is who he's talking about so uh, we believe a confluence of environmental social technological financial economic natural and other forces are interacting with ever increasing unpredictability, rapidity, and power. We believe, I'll say anyone with a brain who studied the, the situation for about 20 minutes, believe these unpredictable interactions are causing future shocks future shocks of ever greater frequency and amplitude. Because the poly crisis looks different, feels different, and is explained differently everywhere, there won't be any single understanding of it. Think of the poly crisis as a global weather system. Weather everywhere is deeply related, but local weather looks different in each place. It looks like January uh, here at this local weather and I guess maybe over in Spain it looks like August. Anyway, 
The poly crisis has many names. Cascading crises, the meta crisis, the perma crisis, the great unraveling, the great simplification, the end of the world as we know it, otherwise known as T-E-O-T-W-A-W-K-I, and more. In Latin America, it is called eco-social collapse. The French call it collapsology, or one can simply call it turbulent times or a rapidly changing world. It doesn't matter much what we call the polycrisis. What matters is whether we recognize that it is real, that we are living in it, and that it is changing our lives. If we accept that much, we will recognize that we have to navigate it. And of course, this is what uh, pretty much the balance of your life is going to be spent, as I've been talking about for 10 years, is how to navigate the poly crisis. Otherwise, figuring out how to comport yourself and live your life once you understand on a cellular level the knowledge. Sorry. So anyway, just for uh, for time's sake, I'm going to have to skip ahead through a whole lot of stuff in the middle uh, and encourage you to read this, but uh, it, would, it would take me three days to read it. So I'm going to jump ahead to the polycrisis pop charts. The polycrisis pop charts. Here are seven diverse candidates to add to a potential high-level public awareness threat matrix for a polycrisis top 10. Climate, corona panic, and conflicts without end are already on the top 10 list, so he's not going to go in to a whole rant on climate, corona panic, and conflicts without end, because they are pretty much, uh, it, looks, it appears, they're going to be with us forever, although I understood that corona panic is going to be, uh, whatever, extinguished in nine more days. So once we get rid of corona panic, uh, as, as one of the top ten polycrisis uh, hits, maybe we can we can think of a new one. Anyway, so how about these seven? In, in, in no particular order, I don't think. The end of American hegemony, the multicentric geopolitical realignment of the world is taking place rapidly. Russia, China, Iran, and other countries have aligned themselves against Western domination. India, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Brazil, and other countries are asserting their own independent interest, often playing both sides off against each other. The end of American hegemony is coinciding with the end of 500 years of Western domination of the world. Um, it also coincides with the end of Western colonialism and materialism. While these interlinked forms of dominance have been eroding for decades, the rapidity of developments now is astonishing. And guys, I just have to break in here. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and debate Michael Lerner. This is his rant, not mine. While I, while I can kind of wrap my head against whatever this man is talking about, anybody who thinks 
for one minute, for one second, that uh, we are at any point looking in the near future at the end of Western colonialism and imperialism. Uh, and where did he say... It, 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 anyway, uh, I, I'm going to beg to differ a little bit. Now, uh, there are going to be a lot more people taking America a lot less seriously, me being one of them. But, but if you think that, uh, you, you know, the U.S. military is just going to shut down those 700 military bases and just go away. Uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding what this man is saying. Uh, these guys, these Western imperialists, these American imperialists are going to be digging their talons in harder than ever to cling to uh, their place at the top of the pyramid. But anyway, I, I could go off. I could see I'm getting off on my own ramp. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to put a little uh, asterisk by the end of American hegemony. But a little more uh, going with the resurgence of autocratic regimes. <clears throat> of, of course, I, I, the way I'm reading it, it, it is just that American hegemony is just one more resurging autocratic regime uh, that, that we're seeing. But anyway, so whether or not it includes uh, uh, America, the resurgence of autocratic regimes, the Western, the Western democratic model of free markets and representative democracy has never worked everywhere. Some people would say it's never worked anywhere and obviously by by reading uh, you know I guess I don't read Twitter feeds very often but I don't think it's working that well here. And anyway this is his rant not mine. Uh, uh, one can argue it never worked anywhere, but that is a different conversation. Okay. Despite that conversation, newly empowered by technologies of mass surveillance, a growing number of autocratic leaders of illiberal democracies and more totalitarian regimes are asserting themselves, and they are far less constrained today by eroding democratic norms. They are far less concerned about American or Western disapproval. They regard the Western democracies as weak and decadent. They are more assertive of shared cross-ideological interests in many places the autocrats, and if you include the autocrats here in this country, uh, anyway, uh, in many places, and some would argue, including the United States, the autocrats have strong or at least majoritarian support from their home populations. It may be true that the impulse toward freedom is universal, but that aspiration must be measured against other goods provided by regimes that meet essential human needs uh, for food, energy, shelter, economic progress, health, education, safety, and the like. And, uh, anyway... Okay, here's one. Number three, the one we've been hearing a lot about 
the explosion of AI technologies brought to public awareness by GP Chatbox, Microsoft, Meta, Google, and others, the, the developers of AI technologies have abandoned caution even as hundreds of scientists signed a letter urging a moratorium based on potentially catastrophic risks. A survey of AI scientists found them estimating a 10% chance that AI could ultimately wipe out human life on Earth. And AI is not alone. Biotech, nanotech, and, ro and robotics are what whoever Bill Joy is famously called the three technologies of mass destruction. The difference between these technologies of mass destruction and weapons of mass destruction, Joy said, was that the weapons required a large industrial base while these technologies could be cooked up by someone working out of their bedroom and posted to the internet. The category, this category is actually a stand-in for all the explosive technological developments transforming our world literally beyond our understanding. Okay, next on his list, global financial system chaos. Economic researchers warn that the global debt overhang may soon be too big to avoid failure. The likelihood of a global recession or worse is believed to be increasing. The fight to control inflation without ending growth puts certain banks in a quandary. On the other hand, ending conventional growth as we know it is essential for a better future. The dollar as the dominant global currency may well be coming to an end. It is overdue in historical terms. And of course, guys, I have been hearing this tired cliche that the dollar as the dominant global currency may well be coming to an end since I first went down this rabbit hole in 2008. Here we are, 15 years later, the dollar is still the dominant global currency, and who knows, maybe it is finally coming to an end. I will believe it when I see it, and that will be an ugly day. Okay, of course, here in the Doomosphere, we cannot forget the migration crisis. Over 100 million forcibly displaced people are desperately seeking refuge as barriers to safe havens go up everywhere. That number will continue to grow exponentially. The migration crisis is among the greatest human tragedies of the polycrisis. No one has compassionate solutions that are politically acceptable in the West or elsewhere for that matter, but mitigation strategies are profoundly important, curbing climate change, improving food production, reducing conflict, making home countries safer, adding, aiding those caught at frontiers, and much more. There will be plenty more about that coming up on Collapse Chronicles. Of course, there is the always present risk of nuclear accident or tactical nuclear arms use. The focus now is Ukraine, but the risk is global. So is the risk of the use of dirty bombs 
or the deliberate targeting of nuclear plants by terrorists or a nuclear meltdown caused by an electric grid going down from a terrorist attack or other causes, you know, such as the rivers, the river water cooling nuclear power plants drying up and blowing away. And let's bring up the rear, last but may or may not be least, world food, water, work, and safety deficits. Billions of people around the world are at increasing risk for the basics of life. There is more, this is more an outcome measure than a primary driver, except that this outcome drives all kinds of other feedback loops. This list is, as I said, highly arbitrary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what seems incontrovertible is that the number of polycrisis drivers keeps increasing and their interactions are ever more rapid, unpredictable, and powerful. And then we're going to skip over his discussion of disaster capitalism. Uh, here is the prospect for a U.S.-China war. He breaks that down. He looks at our multicentric sci-fi future. Uh, he is looking at linking islands of coherence in a sea of chaos. Uh, he is looking at polycrisis thinking, and we are going to write, we're going to wind up because I like this one. Cultivating a polycrisis eye, which is kind of what uh, I do here on Collapse Chronicles. I have been trying for years. I have spent the last 15 years trying to cultivate a polycrisis eye. And one of the things that I do on this channel, maybe you don't realize what it is I do on this channel, I, like Michael Lerner, are trying to help other people cultivate a polycrisis eye. It is entirely possible to cultivate a polycrisis eye that enables you to watch developments across many spheres and witness the unfolding of the polycrisis in all its complexity and unpre unpredictability. When I read the news, I am constantly tracking these intersections. If Russian gas is cut back in the EU, Norway becomes that bloc's primary supplier despite cries of anguish from its environmental community. Likewise, Joe Biden breaks a pledge and allows new oil development in the Alaskan Wildlife Refuge. Germany closes its last three nuclear plants, which then makes it more dependent on fossil fuels and renewables. The constant eruption of new developments continuously reconfigures whatever sector they appear in and those changes flow out to other sectors as well. That's why, uh, you know, the basic framework of the collapse of everything is already in, written in the cards. It's baking in the oven. 
we ain't getting uh, out of this one. You know, the only thing left is, is when and how, uh, which is the when is now. And, uh, but with every time one of these uh, Medusa snakes raises its head, uh, the whole, you know, the whole uh, feast of snakes uh, starts slithering off in different directions. I mean, this is a, a pretty fascinating story. So let's wrap this up. So, it's not just the polycrisis worldview maps, the polycrisis systems maps, and the polycrisis narrative maps that help us navigate the polycrisis. It is cultivating a polycrisis eye with which to watch as this accelerating global weather system evolves, changing local weather conditions everywhere. <clears throat> Developing a polycrisis eye refines our ability to use a polycrisis lens to understand and navigate this turbulent time. Amen, Brother Michael Lerner. So anyway, I've got to write, wrap up this polycrisis chronicle of the collapse and uh, get out there and, and make me some chips and guacamole and a nice ice-cold margarita to celebrate this snowy, I think, is that snowflakes beginning to fall on May 2nd? Get out there and enjoy your May snowfall while you still can. Bye, guys. The Polly Crisis.